Um, the, the title of this symposium, Cutting Edge Medicine, So What Will Kill Us Tomorrow, is really a little schizophrenic. Um, uh, but like this title, I, I also have a bipolar assessment of the future of medicine and human health. On the one hand, I am optimistic that we'll be able to use science to improve human lifespan and quality of life. On the other, solving our new technology, uh, but could be solved by interventions that require only that hum humane considerations and uh, political goodwill prevail. The potential threats to human health by environmental destruction of ecosystems, global warming, nuclear fall, of biomedicine. I'm also going to leave aside in these opening comments economic considerations of how the world can afford to pay for high-tech medicine. There's a radical disconnect between the costs of high-tech therapies, sometimes reaching hundreds of, of thousands of dollars per person per year, the costs of developing new therapeutics, estimated to be about a billion dollars uh, for a new drug currently, with a few dollars per person allocated to health care in much of the world. In preparing my comments for today, I was reminded of the different ways that my patients responded to the diagnosis of cancer. The Protestants were stoical, the Catholics fatalistic and did whatever you recommended. The Jews, however, went to the library and internet, looked up all the latest studies, became experts on their disease, and all and came back with a lot of questions and suggestions about how they would they would uh, they should be treated. Um, Jewish culture is built on a positivistic and optimistic view that knowledge and understanding will uh, benefit mankind and enable us to avert uh, bad consequences. That cultural faith in the positive outcome of science underpins my own uh, scientific work and overall optimism that cutting edge medicine will in fact improve human health. I'm going to um, talk about an example from my own work. I've been very fortunate to participate in a recent revolution in our understanding of, about how gene expression is regulated in cells by very small pieces of RNA called uh, microRNAs in a process that's called RNA interference. And as soon as RNA interference was discovered in mammalian cells, which is only about a decade ago, um, I realized that small RNAs that mimic the natural RNAs might be the basis for drugs. These RNAs are very powerful and can knock down the expression of one gene at a time. So if a gene causes or exacerbates a disease, um, that gene could be turned off by these RNAs. Although there are real obstacles to turning RNAs into drugs, mostly the problem is figuring out how to get them inside cells. In principle, they could be used to treat almost any disease. And in small animal models, my lab has shown that small RNAs could be used to protect against fatal hepatitis, kidney failure from obstructed blood flow, um, breast cancer, and uh, could also stop the sexual transmission of herpes and HIV infection. So that's quite a list of, of possible disease targets. There's some people who think that this, uh, this kind of small RNA could, could constitute a new class of drugs that could, in principle, be used to treat a, a really wide variety of diseases. And in only 10 years since RNA interference was described in our cells, there have already been about a dozen clinical trials beginning to test um, uh, this class of drugs. And they haven't shown any unexpected uh, toxicity. 
So uh, um, I wanted to talk a little bit, since I'm a c cancer doctor by training, about what, 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 how could cutting edge medicine affect cancer treatment? And what, what's my vision for, for a cancer treatment in the future? Although some cancers are now curable, cancer therapies really fall very far short of, of what we'd like them to do for patients with locally advanced or metastatic disease. Um, and until very recently, almost all cancer drugs were very crude uh, cytotoxic agents that didn't really discriminate between cancer cells and normal cells, and therefore they had incredible side effects. And as a consequence, I think cancer treatment has been really almost barbaric. And I, I think that in the generation, um, what we do today to treat cancer will in fact be considered uh, medieval. In the past decade or so, there's been the development of new types of cancer drugs that are targeted and uh, based on the molecular understandings of dif different types of cancers. And, and these types of targeted therapies have really uh, changed the natural history of a number of cancers, of uh, types of leukemia, multiple myeloma, breast cancer, certain types of breast cancer. And I think soon there'll be better drugs for uh, melanoma. And, and these kinds of targeted therapeutics take advance, advantages of what we are learning in the laboratory about the Achilles heels of cancer cells. But on the other hand, the, the numbers of new drug, drugs that are in development is really small, and it takes a, it takes, uh, a long time to make a new drug. Um, and also, cancer is really a formidable opponent, so even the, the best designed um, targeted therapies based on our best ideas and using them to treat really well-defined cohorts of patients often leads to uh, disappointing results. Um, cancer is really an incredibly heterogeneous disease. Um, it, with, between patients even of the same subtypes or even within a patient, there's a, a heterogene, heterogeneity of cells and uh, it's <coughs> You know, it's really hard to target all of them at the same time. And moreover, cancer cells are very unstable. Their genomes are constantly mutating. So uh, the cells that are resistant uh, to a therapy uh, can, you know, really rapidly change as the patient is treated. But, but I, I believe in the future that we're going to have new types of drugs and, and, and one of them is going to be these, these small RNAs, which can knock down one gene at a time. And for cancer, I think that the cancer is going to be the model of what, what's the buzzword in medicine these days, of, of personalized medicine. Uh, Mona said, uh, you know, one of the sort of advances in, mole in molecular uh, biology has been sequencing the genome, which cost hundreds of millions of dollars and took an army of people. It's now possible to do that kind of genetic analysis on a, an individual person's cancer for maybe a thousand dollars and very rapidly and get information about that can that uh, a person's cancer in incredible detail. And I think what we're going to see in cancer is we're going to make a molecular characteriz characterization of a person's cancer, and then we're going to choose from, uh, from a, a network or an array of targeted drugs to really target the uh, Achilles heel heels of a person's cancer. And I think that's going to both be a lot less toxic and also more effective therapy. Thank you very much. <laughs>